Welcome back. This is part two of how to create a map explainer in Adobe After Effects using entirely free assets. In part one, I showed you where to download those assets and how to bring them into Adobe After Effects and then do a basic design of your map. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to bring that map to life using various animation techniques. Now, while this is targeted at beginners, some of this really gets into intermediate territory. So just take things slow. If you need to pause the video, be sure to pause it and go back, rewatch parts if you need. I'm gonna to try to break everything down step by step and take it slow. As always, if you wanna get the project file for this as well as a bunch of other cool stuff, go check out my Patreon page. Big shout out to my tier three patrons. You have Simon over at The Track Record on YouTube, Joseph Culligan, Samir Mahdi, Tyson, the key master, and Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One. Thank you so much folks for making this video possible. So for the first step here, I want to animate the country shape on, and I want to reveal it kind of in a cool, unique way. So one of the trendy techniques right now is to use ink transitions, or like basically like these fluid ink splatter transitions. And in fact, I used these on a recent Johnny Harris video. I got to work on the Ukraine-Russia video, and to show a lot of the Russian invasion visualizations, we were using ink, like liquid transitions. And it was interesting because what you have to do is you have to use them as luma mats and you're like, you have to reposition them so that the flow is in the right direction. And you, sometimes you have to keyframe the, the position, the scale, the timing to make them look exactly how you want them to look. So I'm going to show you this technique right now because it's, um, you know, I use it a lot and it's, uh, it's quite handy. So I'm back here at this website, Pexels. This is where I got the paper texture in part one for the map. And I found this clip of dropping black paint. It's a video clip, and this is gonna be perfect. So I will link to this in the video description if you'd like to follow along here. Now I'm gonna bring this into my project. And essentially what we're doing here, well, let me, let me put it in the timeline first. So I'm gonna place this as a layer directly above my Iraq country shape layer. And it's important that it's directly above it because I'm gonna be using it as what's called a track mat, more specifically a luma mat. Luma is short for luminance. Luminance means brightness values, like basically the black and white values. So what we're doing here is we're using this to say like any anywhere that's black will be either transparent or totally opaque, or and we can invert that as well. So by using that as a luma mat, we're gonna be able to reveal it where only the black is showing here. So now I just need to position this in a way that I want it to reveal my country. So let's say I want this to like the liquid to spill in from the top or the top side and then spill out over the country. And if I want it to completely transition, I need to make sure that it goes from like total white to total black. I'm not too concerned about that as long as I can see a lot of the edges. So I basically need to position this and scale it and, and move it where I want it. Now an easier way to do this is to reposition my anchor point. So the anchor point, is where all the transformations happen from. It's like the center point. So to move that, I'm gonna go grab the pan behind tool. You can hit keyboard shortcut Y. And I'm gonna grab this over here. I want it to be over here where like it's total black. I can hold control to like snap it to the corner there. Okay, now when I go to the transformation properties down here, if I rotate it, it's gonna rotate around the anchor point instead of around the center. We don't want it to rotate around the center. We want it to rotate and scale around this point. So I'm gonna move this kind of to the top here, and then I'm gonna rotate it to position it in a way that will be good. And I can lower the opacity a bit just so I can see position-wise where it is. So let's say I want it to be like over here. And now I'm gonna scale it up a bit, and then I'll bring the opacity back up, and let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so it comes in like this. And it comes in a little fast. Now I have my playback, my preview set up to skip five and half resolution. That's just so it'll playback and it doesn't stall my system too much. If you go to window preview, you can make adjustments to that here. So that's why it's looking like not playing back fluidly. So now I have this set in place. Now I actually need to use it as a mat. So over here, you're gonna see a column that says track mat. If you can't see it, hit this little button here. You'll be able to see it. If you don't see this button, hit this little button here, and then you'll see this button. So I'm gonna to go to the Iraq country layer, and then over here under track mat, I have two options for luma mat. Basically between these two, you're either telling it that white is transparency or black is transparency, so you can flip those as is. For this, I wanna tell it that white is transparency, so it's luma inverted. And now check it out, we can see we have something going on here. 
And there you go, we have a little. Now it comes on a little too fast. So what I wanna do is I wanna fade this up. I wanna make sure that it's already up. So I'm gonna go kind of frame by frame here and I actually want it to start there. So I'm just gonna trim this clip back and then I'm gonna put it here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna fade it up and I could animate the opacity, but there's an easier way. So if you go to the Effects and Presets panel, you can go to Window, Effects and Presets, and then just type in, in the keyword search, type in Fade In. So there's an animation preset or behavior called Fade In and Out Frames. So if I grab this, and I'm gonna drop it on the Iraq Country Shape Layer, because I wanna fade that in. I, wanna, I don't wanna fade in the track map. What this is gonna do, you'll see here it says fade in, fade out durations, and this is the effect controls panel. So it's basically allowing you to manually input the transition amount in frames. So right now it defaults to 15, 15. So there, it kind of fades on, I like that. And I'm gonna actually set, I'm gonna set the fade out to zero. That's a mistake I often make, <laughs> is that it fades out and I don't want it to fade out. So now we have this like fade in like this. That's pretty cool. And you'll notice right as I switch this to Luma inverted, it turned off my, my matte layer. So if that doesn't happen, make sure you turn that off manually. Okay, so now we have this animation in, it's looking really cool. But at the beginning, I actually don't see the, the borders of the country and I have all this, so it looks kind of, it looks a little ridiculous. So I just wanna add the outer border of the country. So to quickly do that, I'm gonna grab my Iraq country layer and I'm gonna hold control and hit D to duplicate it and I'll bring this up to the top just to separate it. And then I'm gonna rename it Iraq Country Border. And I wanna turn track mat off. It's not gonna be used as a track mat. And then I'm gonna go with this layer selected, I'm gonna delete the effects. I don't want this fade in. So I'll delete that. So now I have this. So what I need to do is I need to essentially switch. I need to get rid of the fill of the shape layer and I need to add a stroke element. So. If I go down here to contents, you can see in the group, there's a fill, but there's no stroke. And if I click up here, you can see this, this is where you can quickly edit it. So it has the fill color here, but it has a question mark for stroke. And it's question mark because there's no stroke element down here. So I'm gonna click on this, add stroke. And now I have a stroke here. I can actually put it in the group. And I'm gonna go turn the visibility of the fill off. And now I have this stroke element. And if I click on this, I can click on the word stroke and I can turn the opacity down. So let's bring the opacity down to something like 75. And I can change the width here. You can also just open up the parameters and there's all these different options if you wanna change the color, whatever you wanna do. But I'm happy with that right now. One other thing you can do is you can animate this on. You can animate the shape on via a trim paths. This is a technique I use all the time. So let me just show you how to do that. You click right here and you go trim paths. And then under end, you add a keyframe to end at zero. And then you come from, uh, you go from basically zero to 100. And now I can have this animate on from like zero to two seconds. Now you can see it's animating on like that. And you can obviously add some easy ease to this to make it, you know, come in a little bit faster. And if I solo this, I'm hitting the little solo button here, check it out. So this is a technique I use all the time. Okay, so now we have this border, it's animating on. However, it doesn't, it, you know, it takes a little while to animate on, so these are all still up. So I'm gonna use the same fade in animation preset to bring these in. So I can select all three of these pre-comps and I can go to effects and then double click this and it's gonna add it to all of them and now check it out. Now they all disappear because they all are gonna fade on. And let's go ahead and turn the fade out. Let's set the fade out to zero for all of these. I'm just clicking on the layer and then hitting zero for fade out duration. So it just won't fade out. And now let's say I want the markers to fade on first. I want the text to fade on second and then I want the oil to fade on last. And you can actually dive in here and, uh, and actually apply these to all these layers as well, you know, like fade them in like that and then just pull them back, stagger them a little, whatever you wanna do.
Okay, so now the country shape is fading in. We have a border that's animating on, and now all of our individual assets are animating on, and I, I did that really quickly using these animation presets. So I suggest you harness the power of animation presets. Okay, so I had a patron email me, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, and he said, hey, can you create a tutorial showing how to do like Johnny Harris style animations, but without using geo layers, because geo layers is what we use all the time to create Johnny Harris uh, animations. However, he does do some animations where he's not using geo layers, cause, and it's hard for people because geo layers is a really expensive plugin, it has a steep learning curve. So I wanna show you a technique that can really make you make it easy to create dynamic animations quickly and that are like Johnny Harris style where he has it, you know, 3D. I would say one of the Johnny Harris styles is that he's looking down the map and there's like a shallow depth of field. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. And I know this is targeted at beginners, even though a lot of this is like intermediate kind of stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to break this down in the easiest way possible so that anybody can do it. So to make this 3D, I'm gonna to toggle this here so we can see our switches. I'm just gonna switch all these to 3D, even our reference map, just in case. And I'm gonna set up a rig that uses a null object to control the camera. So you'll all, all you need to do is make changes to the null and it's gonna automatically move the camera around. This is a setup that a lot of people use and they use it because it makes it incredibly easy, especially if you're working on like if you want everything to focus on the center of your map comp or your world, this is a perfect way to do that. So I'm gonna right click in here and I'm gonna to go to new null object and then I'm gonna rename this camera control. So a null object has transformation properties but it, nothing renders, it's just you use it to control a lot of objects. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a camera. This is where it gets pretty advanced but just stay with me and follow this step by step, you shouldn't have any problems. I'm gonna click new camera. You have this crazy dialog box, don't get overwhelmed by it. Make sure you're set to two node camera, go to preset, set it to 80 millimeter, and you wanna turn on lock to zoom. And I'm just gonna turn off, I'm gonna disable depth of field right now because I wanna you know, focus on that a bit later. So, but you make sure that you have it set lock to zoom, otherwise your, your focus is gonna be off and that's an advanced aspect that we don't want to get into right now. So this is all set up well and good. I'm going to click OK. And now you're in 3D land, you have a 3D camera. So how do we control it? Well, we use our camera control null. But to get it set up, set your camera control null to 3D. You have to do that. And then you parent your camera to the camera control null. And that's it. That's it. Now your rig is set up. To control it, I'm going to grab camera control. I'm going to hit S for scale. And then I'm going to hold shift and hit R for rotation. And now watch, watch what happens as I move this around. So now I have scale, um, and as I, as I bring the scale down, it zooms in. As I bring the scale up, it zooms out. And if I zoom real far in, now I can uh, play with the orientation here, which is essentially all the rotations. And I can change like the bearing and the pitch, or I can you know tilt the, the layer back and I can come from the side here. So this is gonna allow you to get in really close to the map and basically spin it around so that you're looking down the, the side of the map, super cool. And if at any point you don't like what your map is doing, you just open up the camera controls and reset the controls, it's gonna bring you right back. So let's go back here again. Now if you noticed, let's say we wanna be looking down the side here. So I'm gonna mess with orientation and scale so that we're looking like this. But the problem is, if I full screen this, you can see we have this hard border and it looks terrible that it's the end of the texture. So what I can do for that is I'm gonna go down to paper texture and grab it and then go over to effects and presets and then I'm gonna do a keyword search for an effect called motion tile and just grab the motion tile, throw it on here. I use this all the time. So this is essentially gonna like allow me to extend it out and you do that via the output width and height. So let's just extend that out to like 300. We'll extend them both out by 300. And now you can see we ha no longer have that hard edge, but we do have a nasty edge. So if you turn on mirror edges, it's gonna make it look a little bit more seamless. So now I'm just gonna position this in a way where I can you know, see the text kind of in the background here. And I wanna be able to give it some, uh, some depth. So we have a cool position here, but I wanna add some depth of field because this is looking really flat. So the way that I do that is I'm gonna double click on camera here. And you remember I select, 
I selected lock to zoom and the way that my camera is moving around, the zoom is set right at the center. So this is going to work perfectly. Now if I enable the depth of field and click OK and I full screen this, you're going to see it's not very evident right now, but you can see that it's starting to get a little bit more blurry. So if I zoom way in, okay, you can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the levels up to a crazy amount so that you can, you can really see it. So to do that, double click the camera, make sure this little preview checkbox is set. And now to make things blurry, one way is to bring the f-stop down. So if you understand camera terminology, if you bring your f-stop to a lower number, it's going to give you a more shallow depth of field. So if I set this to one, that's going to make things more shallow. But to really see what's going on, I'm going to crank up the blur. So we're just going to crank this up to like 400 to really, just to see what's going on. Now we're going to let this render out and now check it out. Now we can see that we have this insane depth of field. But let's say we want this focus to be right on Baghdad. You can go down in here, cam camera options, and then you can move your focus distance. So right now it's set to lock to zoom. So it's locked to the zoom. But if I start to move it like this, check it out, it's going to move around. So if I pull it back a little bit, it's going to put it right on Baghdad, which is very, very cool. Now, this is, this is quite a bit of depth. So what we can do is we can actually bring the blur like way, way down. OK, now I've got the position. I'm just going to do a slow animation in. And to do that, I'll just go to scale. I'll just grab camera control scale. And let's say we want this to be our final position. I can grab this keyframe, bring it out here, and then I can grab the scale and then just have it zooming like this. And then I'm going to grab the second keyframe, right click on it, and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And that's just going to make sure it comes to a slow stop. I'm going to zoom out here. You can see my timeline is really long. So I want, you know, I want this to be only like a six second animation. So I'm going to bring my playhead to six seconds. I'm going to hit N to trim down my work area. And then I'm going to right click and just trim the comp to the work area. And now as my final, final touch, what I do is I go in and I add an adjustment layer. So right click, new adjustment layer. And I go to effects and presets. And then you can add something like a vignette, you know, classic. Don't make it too tacky. <laughs> so that's going to darken up those edges, bring your attention more to the map. You can adjust that if you want. I don't care to adjust it. And I'll go back and add a noise as well. So noise effect. I'll put noise on the adjustment layer. And then I'll set the noise to something like 10. I don't know. It's just going to make it a little grainy. All right, now I can go to composition, add to render queue, and I'm going to render this out to see what I've got. OK, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. I also have a playlist called Monday Maps. And if you really love map animations, go check out my Patreon page where you can get all my project files, animation presets, and get some access to exclusive tutorials.